Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a car in Autodesk Fusion 360. So, in this video, I want to show you something that I might be doing on Wednesday or Thursday. And this is this sort of spinning wheel situation. So I've chosen wheelofnames.com. And the idea here is that I've entered these three models that we might potentially be making. Um, this is based off some of the comments that I've received from you guys on um, some of the things that you'd like me to make live. So what I've done is I've not prepared anything. I've just put these three names in the wheel. And I'm not going to spin the wheel today. I'm going to do it live because I can edit it. And if I don't like one, I can remove it. But live, I can't do that. So I want you guys to see me spin the wheel live. And then we're going to, whatever it picks, we're going we're gonna to model land. Okay. Currently, I have three names on this screen. Um, if in the comments I receive some more recommendations, um, I'd be happy to add those on. And it'll be interesting. So you might be looking at this and thinking, well, F20 makes sense. FW190 makes sense. What? Why are you doing heels? Um, it's actually um, a model request I got uh, some while back, which I did do a bit of practice on, but the deal didn't go well. Um, so, I, so I thought it, it might still be fun to, to try it out. So that's something that's going to happen this Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I'll let you know of the timings. And I've taken the Thursday off, so I'm, I'm, I will have some free time to actually do the live this time, which is nice. And uh, please also don't forget to ask your questions for the Q&A, which I'll be making a video for hopefully next week. Uh, awesome. On that note, let's get cracking onto this tutorial video. Okay, so in the previous video, we had finished some of these surfaces in the back. And what I want to do in this video is something slightly different. Uh, while we are still going to be working on these surfaces, so that's going to be one surface there, and then there's going to be some surfaces over here that we're going to work on. Uh, what I want to do is try and use slightly different methods. So we've seen the conventional um, patch method, which is we make the lines as specific as possible, and then we, uh, we patch them up. Or sometimes if that doesn't work, we loft them up. But what I want to do in this video is a little bit different, right? So we know how to do the classic stuff. So I thought, why not give it a shot to do something slightly differently? So in this video, I want to try and minimize the amount of um, precise sketching we do and try and make use of the surfaces that already exist. So that would be that surface there, which would help us to make the surface here. And some of these surfaces here that would allow us to make that surface there. So if this doesn't make sense, don't worry. What I would recommend you to do is go ahead and make this surface here, which is this back uh, surface, and also this, and also this connecting uh, surface here. Okay, pause the video, give it a go, and come back and see how I would have done it. Cool, so hopefully you've done that. Um, let's get started. So I wanna create a new sketch on the side plane. Okay, and what I wanna do is I actually wanna go back to when I created this one. If you remember, we had a sketch where we'd created the entire arc and we we're just gonna take that reference. So in this sketch, in the previous one, I can see that I have one of these. So what I'll do is I'll just click on that one. I'm gonna press Control C. I'm gonna hide that sketch and come back to the current sketch where we are. I'm just gonna do Control V, right? We've seen this happen at least two or three times. So hopefully this is nothing new, but just as a gentle reminder, we've taken a sketch reference from a previous sketch and we've just copy pasted it into this one now. Okay, so we've got the lovely arc over there. Cool. I'm gonna try and make no more sketches for this particular surface to start with, okay? So what I wanna try and do, I'm just gonna finish the sketch here. And if I just roll around a little bit, we can see that if I try and do sweep, so I'm gonna click on sweep and the path and the profile I wanna select is this one and this one. Okay, so it's not letting me select the second one, not a problem. Let's do path, and I just wanna click on this. And you can see that it's given me some very interesting results. Um, let's try and do parallel and see what happens. So selected profile is non-planar, parallel sweep requires a planar profile. Okay, so that doesn't work. Let's go back to perpendicular. And the profile was this one. Yeah. So. It's a very interesting profile, and this is probably also because that is 3D. But what it's done is it's created a very beautiful surface. 
um, a node looks funky, but what we want to do is take the surface and we'll also add another one over there and then we'll trim it away. Okay, so it's a slightly different method, but I thought it would be nice. So let's press OK and let's repeat the same process here. So we'll sweep and the profile we want to select is that one and the path we want to select is this one. Okay, let's go ahead and press OK. And what I'd like to do now is to now create a 3D sketch that will allow us to trim this in the right way. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on the right plane again. Again, fit point spline. And I'm going to actually try and do three points. I know I said in the past that I want to do two points usually, but for just demonstration for at least once, I'm going to do three uh, points here. So the first point I want to bring in all the way till the center. So we already started the sketch in the center, which means this point, which is where the arc is meant to be, can therefore come all the way to the side. Come on. I'm not sure why it's not letting me. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we want to try and bring this a little bit outside. And then as for the second one, I'm going to bring this inside a little bit. Sorry, my fusion seems to be lagging again today. Um, but yeah, so we'll take the second one and we'll add a little bit of dimension here. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And this one, because it's a little bit, um, it is in the center, so I'm just going to move it a bit to the right. And then what I want to do is I want to grab that tangent and make it horizontal. Okay. And this one is OK for now. And let's see what we can do from the side view, because remembering, that from the side view, we do want to add that little bit of curvature that we can see here. So I'm just going to pull this up very slightly. Go ahead and press OK. And you can see already that that looks really, really nice. So if I do left and right from here, oops, I want to grab the tangent. So if I do left and right here, that means we're going in and out from the side view, which means ideally it should not affect anything um, from the side view. So Cool, I think that looks nice. I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And what we've essentially done is now we've created a sort of knife that we could use uh, to cut the rest of this out. So let's go ahead and press finish sketch. Use the trim tool, click on that 3D sketch we've just made. And I'm gonna select that surface and that surface and press okay. And there we have it. We've basically just taken away that little surface. So you see what I've done here is, usually what we do is we create a few splines and then we patch it up. So in a way it's additive. But what, we, what we've done here is we over extruded or over swept and then we trimmed it away. So both ways work really it is your decision. I thought I would try to do something different this time. Okay, one more thing I want to do uh, before we continue is to trim off this so we, we can make it exactly uh, towards the plane of symmetry. So I'm just going to click on the trim tool, press on that green line, and now I'm going to take one, two, and three. And press OK. And you can see now that is now exactly at the plane of symmetry. So there we have it. We've created everything in the back section for now. So these are all plane surfaces. And then eventually we'll also add the headlights as well as the exhaust. Awesome. So one more thing we want to do in this tutorial is to add this surface here. So there are a couple of ways we can do this. Again, we can go with the traditional way. Um, in fact, if you do want to take this up as a challenge, what I would even more recommend is create this entire thing as a single piece, okay? And um, that, that I think that'd be really, really, really interesting to do. Uh, but in the sake, uh, for, the, for the sake of time and uh, simplicity, I'm going to chop it up into a little bit more, a few more pieces and then uh, build it from there. But what I might do actually is, um, my initial plan was that I'd make this section over here like that, but there's nothing really stopping us from going all the way here and then bridging it here. And then we take away the window section afterwards. So let's try it like that. I'm gonna go from the side view, create a sketch, uh, go to fit point spline. We go there. 
and let's bring it all the way to that black point there okay and again before doing anything else just make sure it's in the right 3d uh, 3d point okay so that's actually okay so let's start maneuvering this now i'm going to take that press on the keyboard and just there we have it and maybe we can do a little bit to that as well perfect so yeah i mean there's nothing really stopping us from from going from there all the way down so let's try that so i'm going to go from there to somewhere a little bit diagonal uh, that's because i want to try and tackle it all the way there so i might actually take the m press m on the keyboard and take it a little bit further then we have it okay and you can see automatically what that's done is it's taken that reference point from the previous sketch automatically so that purple line and the purple dots you see are a projection from the previous sketch okay again you don't have to do it like this it's just something i'm playing around with to see how how many different ways there are to do surfacing okay now there is an instant problem i can see and that is that this is one big line right and we did this on purpose i remember copy pasting this line a couple of times um, and in order to do that, we, and we did that because we wanted to break up the sketch and then use it as a patch line as well as splines. But again, what we have seen is if in, in cases like this where we encounter this, we don't want to be creating uh, too many splines based off the previous spline. If you do want it, you copy paste the sketch from before, bring it into this one, and then break the sketch according to different points, which we've done a couple of times in this, in this video series already. But again, a sort of slightly lazier way of doing this would, to be, would, would be to loft it. So ideally, again, in a patch, you would go one, two, three, and four, right? And again, you can see that actually these two are different surfaces, so we might encounter a problem there as well. If you've noticed so far, lofts and patches like it when surfaces are the same. It makes it a bit easier, naturally. Um, so right away what we can think of is we can do a loft after patching these two up so let's try that out finish sketch um so i'm going to stitch one two press ok so now that has become a single surface and now we can go ahead and loft this together so we'll do loft we'll take that one as the starting point we'll take that one as this you can see that it still wanted to select that but if i'm I'm pretty sure if I click that there, it'll take that as a single sketch. And it did. And the reason why I was able to do that is because it is a single surface. Now, after, after stitching it up. Okay, so the two profiles have been selected, but naturally we want to um, incorporate that little curvature in 3D space using that line and that line. So I'm going to go ahead and press the arrow on the rails. Going to click on that one for the first rail and that one for the second rail. And that's the beauty about this. Um, We've just been able to create a very nice surface without patching anything, right? Now, the only thing I can think of is to add a little bit more dimension and to bring the window out a little bit. We could add another rail that goes from there to there, but that's fine. Um, we don't have to do that. And another thing is we forgot to add curvature to this line here. So I'm just going to edit the sketch that we made. And we can see here that that's actually a complete straight line, even though it is a spline. And therefore it has no curvature so what i want to do is i'm going to activate the tangent handle and i'm just going to add a bit of more curvature to this here so let's add it similar to how that line is going there okay go ahead and press ok and now activate tangent handle press on the keyboard and smooth that and press ok Go ahead and finish the sketch and there we go it's automatically been updated all right fantastic so that's cool um we've been able to do that i mean in the past all the cars i've made i've sort of made um, made that sketch independent of the window but now it's inclusive of the window and then we'll take the window away from the sketch because it's actually flushed um so I guess that's it for this video in terms of the surfaces we're creating. I'm pretty sure in the next one, we're going to be tackling this empty area over here. And then uh, once that's done, then creating the rest of the top part is pretty easy to do. 
And if you remember, we've already done the front section. We might be able to add a little bit more detail if we wanted to. And that's half of the car pretty much done. So the only thing that will be left after the next video is a few more surfaces to patch and extrude and rev um, to loft and sweep, and then adding a bit more detail, which would be the fun bit because that's gonna add a little bit more personality to the car, um, which, uh, which will really make it look like a Mercedes. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much. Please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and yeah, please uh, let me know if you recommend Wednesday or Thursday for the live. We will be doing something interesting because I have no idea what I'm going to be building. The, um, the spinner will decide uh, what I'll be building on, on the Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, yeah, the, the link to ask questions is still open. Please make sure you do that. And uh, we'll have a nice uh, Q&A video hopefully next week or the week after that. All right. Thank you so much. See you all very, very soon. Have a great rest of the week. Take care.